Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the dreaded hot start and uh, why we use jet engines and starting them the way that we do. So first things first, uh, as we're climbing inside this aircraft, it's a couple of little things that you probably are aware of with a jet engine. But basically when you have a jet engine, you have this gigantic fan in the front, and then of course you have a bunch of little, if you want to imagine those fans, all sorts of compressor blades. Then you have a little section in the middle of the jet engine where you're going to be inserting some fuel and some uh, basically electricity, a spark if you want to think about it, creating some com combustion, which you're then are going to push out the back where you're going to have some recovery blades here. They're going to suck some of that energy to keep the thing going, and then the rest of it we're just going to blow out the back for the purposes of generating some thrust. Again, the higher the mass flow, the more thrust, and off we go kind of a thing like that. But jet engines have their own kind of little quirks that propeller airplanes don't have. Uh, one, of course, is they need to spin a lot faster in order to get any work done. Now, on a propeller blade, of course, you know, 2,700 RPM, and you're buzzing there. For aircraft like this, uh, you can talk tens of thousands of RPM, actually not an aircraft like this, that would be moving pretty quick for a fan blade that size. But the fact of the matter is, a lot of times those fan blades can actually exceed the speed of sound for the purposes of uh, getting all that air sucked into the engine. Now, the, of course, that means you're also going to have an enormous amount of inertia. If you wonder why jet engines take so long to spool up, it's because of all that inertia that you have to overcome. That also means when we start them, we have to use a different process for it. So what we're going to be demonstrating is what they call a hot start where we're basically going to introduce the fuel as soon as we pull the starter. Now you're sitting there going, um, why, why is that a problem? I do that on um, piston engines all the time. Well, the problem is the engine's barely spinning enough to do anything, and we're going to just throw fuel into the chamber and light it on fire. Combine the two elements, and you could run yourself into a situation where you get a really, really bad fire. So that's one of the reasons why jet engines are started the way that they're started, and we'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift my head up here, and we're going to go ahead and get everything ready to go. Go ahead and fire up our fuel pumps. Uh, we have, we're carrying quite a bit today, so I'm going to go ahead and pop all those items. Plenty of fuel on board. Everything else is uh, set. So okay, we can go ahead and set these things on and off. Do one of those. Oh, there we go. It looks pretty good to me. Pretty good. Uh, we've already got the APU. It's uh, happily uh, kind of chugging along here. Oh, we'll make sure it's uh, set up so we can actually fuel some air. Good. We're cross-feeding into the two systems. Looks good to me. We'll go ahead and pop the two packs off so we can go ahead and get those engines turning. So we're going to get yelled at here, and it's going to get all sort of ready for us. So to demonstrate this, so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to come down to my engine page. And what that will do is that will open up and give you a great idea of what my engine is doing here. Uh, the nice thing, of course, is we can actually read these. Now, on our engine, uh, we have a bunch of warning lights here that basically say, please don't do this. You're going to explode if you do this. Our first little line here is basically saying, um, don't exceed this temperature if you don't have to. Uh, the second one is saying, if you exceed this temperature, you have to shut the engine down because you've done goofed. And you notice, by the way, this isn't Celsius. And you notice this is a measure of our gas temperature. This is the stuff that's coming out of the back of our big jet engine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally start this engine incorrectly. I'm going to go ahead and I'll pop on uh, engine two here. I've actually turned the fuel on. We're not even turning the engine, and I've already turned the fuel on to it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reach my head up here, and I'm going to go ahead and pull the starter itself. So I'm going to come down to the crank position. I'm going to go ahead and press the starter. Now watch what happens. Notice my engine is on fire. It is um, barely turning. It's turning at 5 or 6% of its uh, maximum speed here. And it is rapidly accelerating uh, through 800 degrees in the Celsius scale. It is just brrr right now, firing away, absolutely uncontrolled right now. Now, the interesting thing is this is the world's nicest jet engine, even though, oh, there it is. Notice we're immediately getting an EGT warning here as this thing is basically starting to cook itself. And you can see we've already got ourselves a big angry yellow warning and it's continuing to cook itself because there's so much extra fuel basically chilling in the engine. Now they're, oh my gosh, look at that, look at that. There's our warning. Oh no, 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 no. And of course, um, their engine, we're going to have a maintenance event as soon as we, oh, yep, right into a maintenance event. So uh, we've basically not necessarily destroyed the engine. There's the warning. Ah, she's coming apart. She's coming apart. Did you see the angry warning that just uh, formed over there on the right as the thing started to happen? Now, fortunately for us, um, we're not going to suck a blade in or anything like that. But you just absolutely devastated that engine. And now notice, of course, that once we get to a certain RPM, it goes up. And notice the automatic shutdown was triggered. And then, of course, it caught itself, activated again. And now we're all back to normal. That engine is a maintenance problem now. Uh, they're going to have to go and probably take the whole thing apart, you know, three quarters of a million dollars later. So let's go ahead and reset everything and start it correctly this time so you can see the differences. All right, well, let's do that again and we'll do it properly. Remember, those engines have to spin really, really fast to safely can basically contain all the shenanigans going on. Don't worry about these spooling down. Now. That's just the nature of the beast here. So let's do the same thing. But this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it properly. 
I'm going to make sure that my pressure is good. I'm going to make sure my starter is good. I'm going to make sure the fuel is not on. So I'm going to go ahead and come up here and press the start, which is going to get the thing engaging. Now notice there's no gas temperature. We're going to get a little bit, obviously, because there's going to be atmospheric temperature. And right now our engine is just spinning up. It's using the compressed air from the APU to basically get this thing turning as fast as it can. There's a ton of airflow. We're actually getting a teeny bit of thrust actually off this. And you can watch over here on the right as everything starts to climb. And we're going to get up to 25%. And then we're going to go ahead and snap on the fuel. Now watch what happens this time. You can see immediately our exhaust gas temperature gauge starts to rise. Uh, that's because we have combustion going on, which is, that's intentional. Uh, the other thing you're noticing is that our N1 is starting to climb very smoothly. We actually got the uh, inertia, you can't really do this, but we got a little bit of the inertia out of it. That doesn't make sense mechanically, but oh well, before we actually started introducing the fuel. Now notice that our climb towards our idle RPM here is uh, looking pretty good. We just got a bunch of power that just snapped on and we never came with anywhere in the neighborhood of coming close to damaging this engine by the time we got a nice sustained combustion going on inside of that engine. And you can see just how sketchy that is. Now, some of you, of course, are sitting here going, okay, so let's say I accidentally do a hot start. Uh, how do I stop it? Well, let's go ahead and create a hot start again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the fuel and we're gonna go ahead and activate our left engine here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap that one. I don't know if it's gonna pull up. Notice, notice the temperature rising, notice the temperature rising. Oh no, it's out of control. All you have to do is cancel it just cut the fuel off of the engine. Now notice the temperature on this thing is dropping. And now notice here that our RPM is still increasing. Now, the reason it's still increasing, even though we don't have combustion right now, is on account of the fact that it's still undergoing its start cycle. So now if we let this go up to, let's say about 25, 29% there, if I put the fuel back on, you're gonna observe here that our temperature is going to start slowly climbing. We're actually a little too high for a proper RPM here. So we're actually gonna to have to order this one to go ahead and I'll restart this entire process. Otherwise, we're gonna end up with a ton of fuel basically sitting in the bottom of our jet engine here. So this is a good time to restart it. But you can see if you do have a hot start, cut the fuel, stop the starter, let it stop spinning, redo the entire process, and then you'll have a safer time. Enjoy.